you're welcome to lesson three in this lesson we'll be talking about functions now when you're writing a function it is basically made up of three parts the first part is um, your return arguments um, in this case now I have it to be blank here what I have is the same thing as writing this and it's also the same thing as writing this So either you write it this way, or you write it this way, or you write it this way, they're all referring to the main function, or a typical example of how to write a function. Or let me write this one this way. So basically, a function is made up of three parts. It's easier to explain with this. The first part is your return argument, which is void. Now, normally, programmers prefer to write this way when you're writing, or this way, because by making this place um, empty like this, what you're saying is that um, your main is... Um, returning a void argument then of course you have the next thing to be the name of your function which of course in this case is main the name here is main the name here is main and the next thing you have is the argument list which in this case is also void later on in the study we'll be looking at how to put um, a, an argument list inside of these um, brackets but for now we'll be starting with um, something simple so I'm going to delete all of this and go back to what I have initially. I will delete this too. I prefer it to be this simple. All right. So let's see how I can um, just um, call a function within this main function. Now to do that, I'm going to create another function. And I'm going to call that function, um, let me call it new function new function so new f this new function definitely we also have the opening and the closing um, brackets and of course you have your brace like this I prefer it to go down like this All right. then um, the next question is what do I want this um, new function to do this fun new function I just wanted to just print out a simple statement and that is um, um, let's talk about function Let's talk about the function. That's cool. Let's talk about function. Then um now in programming you make use of end l in C or you make use of a backslash n to take your cursor to the new line. So I'll be using n l here. If you're using n l you have to use it together with the symbol. But if you're using backslash n, you don't need to put the symbol, you just do something like this. So anyone you want, you can apply. So you can do this, or you remove this, and you do this. All right. So this is what I want the new function to do. Now I'll call this new function inside of main, so that you can see how functions are linked and connected together. So to call a function, all you need to do is, the same way you have the function here, um, you're going to have it here too. You're just going to write it exactly the same way. New function, then um, open and close brackets, then a semicolon. Now, to make this um, look uh, very, very appropriate because I want you to follow the standard format so you won't get confused along the line, I'm going to make this new function void new function so that you know that this is the return argument for it. Of course, this is the name of the function and of course there's not uh, no argument list on the inside of it. So if you're calling your function, you don't need to repeat this void or whatever um, return argument is having. All you just need is the name of the function, the uh, parentheses, and a semicolon. That's all you need. Okay. So if I call this function inside of me, what will happen is that the system will run through this first. We note this. Then, of course, we come here to main. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do for main? Of course, everything is running from the main, basically. It will come here to note this, but everything, every program you're running in a C++ definitely runs from the main. So to come here, okay, new function want me to run from the main, and uh, you want me to call this, so it's going to call this and display it on the screen. So let me just execute, compile and run. So you can see that. Let's talk about function. So, escape. 
now what will happen if i transfer this from here and i bring it downward let me just cut this and take it to the bottom like this now this is going to create a problem for uh, the system because the compiler will be like wow you're calling name function i've never seen anything like this before now of course like i said earlier even if you add this on top of the main function the compiler will take may take note of it but it's not really going to run it per se because um almost everything you're doing runs from the main function everything you're doing runs from the main, main function actually so in this case now it's like okay name function i've not seen this before and before the compiler will get to this point the compiler would have raised um error error message for you let's try that let me just click on this let me show you that execute compiler and run you see that the compiler does not like it at all it's like wow what are you saying here you can see new function was not declared in this scope so the compiler will be lost now to avoid that in program because not always every time that you remember to place um, any other function you're using apart from main function on top of the main function so the best approach is to use uh, what we call a function decorator so all you need to do is just transfer this function the same way you have it here the same way you've written it um, void name function just you can copy and paste it on top of your main that's immediately after you're using namespace std paste it then remember to put a semicolon at the back so that's a kind of a function uh, decorator it must always end with a semicolon now if you put this first then by the time the compiler is running of course your compiler will start running from the preprocessor that's actually include by the time the compiler gets here it's compiler be like okay now you've told me that you'll be using this the compiler would have to taking note of it so by the time the compiler gets here it's not going to complain be like okay let me see it's likely that it's somewhere because now you've given it a, a kind of a tag and info information before and that okay you're going to take make use of this so if you run this now it's going to run without any problem you can see so compiler will get in then pick this and all of that let's talk about function all right now another thing you should take note of is that it's not only inside the main function that i can um, call a function even though everything runs from the main function it's actually possible for me to call a function also inside another function that i'm calling inside the main function now to illustrate that let me create another um, function and i'm going to call that function um void another function i'll just use our name another function exactly void another function then of course it must be like this and this don't forget this is um a function decorator like i said it's always a good practice whenever you're using any function other than the main function to always have it on top like this after you're using namespace std so that the compiler will be aware of it so i can go ahead and um talk about this function now void um another function another function then my open and close parenthesis then um, um i need to do this also because of course uh, because a function i need to tell us what the function will be doing so i put that inside this brace so for this function the only thing i want this function to do is to print out this see out uh, let's say it's time to check another function let's just do this so um i can use a backslash n now like i said they mean the same thing semicolon and um what i'll do is this another function i'm going to call this inside my new function so what i'm going to do is i will go inside there then call this another function of course if you call a function all you need to do is type the name of the function put your parenthesis then um, a semicolon like i said when you're calling a function you don't need to repeat this so let me just comment this this calls a function this calls a function all right so let's run this let's see what we're going to have now by doing this now i expect the compiler by the time the compiler gets here of course the compiler will take note of this new function the compiler will come here 
and pick what I have inside a function. What I have inside a function is, let's talk about function. Then also, as it's speaking that, it's also calling this another function, which is inside the new function, which is it's time to check another function. So I expect the compiler to print this first, then follow by this. So let's see what we have. You can see that. Let's talk about function is coming first, then follow by the next one. It's time to check another function. Now, another thing you should take note of is that um, C++ is case sensitive. That means if I'm calling this function and I use something different from the uppercase that I used here, you can see that it's uppercase I used there. If I should change this to lowercase here, then the compiler will definitely raise um, the error message for me, will flag the error message for me. So let me try that compiler run. You can see the compiler does not like it at all, saying no, 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 no. This is not a lowercase, it's uppercase. So if I change it and I run, I'll get back what I'm supposed to get. All right. Now, another interesting thing you need to take note of when you're dealing with function is um, when you're using a function, you cannot um, use a local, you cannot um, call a local function outside of the function that you've, um, um, no, let me say local variable. You cannot call a local variable rather outside of the function that you've defined it. Now, this is, um, let me just use a simple example to illustrate that. Let's say I have um, inside my main, let's say I declare my variable to be of type integer and the variable name is height. And um, I just declare this like this. The variable name is height, it's of type integer. Now, this is a local variable because I've declared this inside of a function, not outside of the function. And it's only applicable inside this function main. Outside this function main, I cannot have access to it. You know, the beauty of C++ is this object-oriented uh, uh, concept of encapsulation uh, and the rest that you see below along the line, inheritance and the rest you see below along the line. So, it's, it's acting like a self-contained unit within this function I can make use of it, but outside this function, I can't use it. So it's a local variable. All right. Even though the concept of a cancellation is beyond this, it actually extends to class. We'll be dealing with class later on. All right. So now if I come over here and I do C out, um, let me say, um, I is and I have another sign like this to pick it up. Then um, end up. Now, the system will definitely raise um, the error message again because the system will like, or uh, compiler will complain that no, I can't find it inside of this function. You've not defined it inside this function. You can only make use of it where you define it. So let's try that. Execute, compile, and run. You can see. Um, it was not declared in this scope. So it's saying, you know, you can't make use of this inside this new function because I've not seen anything like this before. Now, what of if I now cut this? Let me remove this height from here and place it on top of this. Now, I've defined height as a local variable inside this place, new function, and I'm also making use of it inside this function. Definitely, the compiler will be okay with that. Now, you can see that height is, um, oh, wow. It's giving it a value instead because um, a, difficult val a default value because I did not initialize my height to be of any value. Now, it's important to state this. In programming, it's always important to um, initialize your variable. Whenever you're making use of a variable and you've declared it of a particular data type, then it's a good practice to also um, set a value for it. Even if you're not using it yet, you can set the value to zero or anything. This uh, will actually help to avoid some um, unnecessary errors that the system may raise along the line. Most of the time, the system will just pick a default value and set for your variable if you refuse to do that. So now, if I set my variable to 10 and I run this, you see that I have um, something different. You can see height is 10. Height is then you pick the value of the variable which is 10. All right. Now, apart from making it local, if I 
also remove this from here. Assuming I don't want it to be a local variable, I want it to be global. I can cut this and actually place it on top of this. That's outside all the functions before any function at all. If I should place this here, then this becomes a global variable. That means any of these function can have access to it. If I run this now, it's going to run. Even though it's, it's outside of this new function, but because it's global, this function can have access to it as well as this, as well as this. All the functions can have access to it. So let me run that. Let's see what we have. You can see that I still have my, my result. Height is 10. But I should also inform you that it's not a good practice to make your variables global. You'll learn more on this as we go on. All right. Now, another thing that I would like to talk about when you're making use of um, function is that there are times you want to introduce arguments into your function. Take, for example, um, let me remove this. Let me remove this. I don't need this. And um, let me remove the all of this. I may still make use of the new function. Delete, then delete this too. Now, let's say I want this function. The only function I'm making use of now is a um, new function. So let's say this new function has um, um, an argument list. Of course, you can have as many argument lists as you want. In this case, I just want to use a single argument um, list, just for an example. And assuming for my argument list, I'm making it of data type car. It can be integer, it can be float, it can be anything you want. As I'm making it of car, this is how you write it. You write car, then you make use of this um, sign, a kind of a pointer. We'll be talking about pointer later on in this training video also. And um, let's say I have name. So I'm saying that um, my function, which is called new function, should um, have a return argument of void, should return nothing, and um, the argument list contains this, a variable called name, a kind of a pointer, which is of um, type car. All right. So if I have this, I can go ahead inside main, and um, oh, before then, I need to make this look like this. Don't forget I said earlier, your function decorator must look exactly like the way you define your function. So that means this and this must look exactly alike, except that there will not be semicolon at the back of this. Semicolon will only be at the back of your function decorator. All right. So let's say this function, I want this function to do just one basic task. See out. And um, I want it to print out this. I am... Then um, the name, NL, take it to main line. This, this is also a good practice. So this is the only thing I want this function to do. I am, whatever is here should be the same with this. That means it's going to pick um, up this. So this name is actually the same thing as what I have here. So I want you to just say I am name. That means whatever argument you're passing to represent this. And to do that, by the time I call this function inside here, don't forget, I would need to call this function here. And if you're calling the function, you just type the name of the function like we said earlier. New function and um, the opening and the closing um, brackets. And of course, a semicolon. Now, when you're calling this function, you cannot leave it blank like this because you've already defined it to contain argument lists. So it will not be appropriate for me to leave it blank. And, of course, from your background of um, data types, you know that whenever you declare something to be a car, then, of course, you're referring to a string. And if it's a string, then it must be in quotes like this. So let's say the name we are interested in here is Obi. You can choose any name, Obi, Ayo, um, Zulu, any name you want. So let's say we're interested in Obi. All right. So if I run this, what I expect the system to do is by the time the system gets to this point and is calling this function, that means it's going to call what I have here. This is what I have inside this function. I am name. Now, by the time it's picking this name, it's going to pick whatever you've passed inside it. Now, what I've passed inside this to represent this car name is OB. So by the time the system gets here, it's supposed to print I am 
will be the argument here. So let's run that. Let's see what we're going to have. Yeah, you can see that. I am OB. That's straightforward. Now, one thing you should take note of is if you make the mistake of writing this as something other than a string, something like this, then the system will definitely complain because the system will be like, no, you said this is a data type car. I can't see any string here. So the system is not going to accept this. Let's check that. You can see the system will definitely complain. Uh, also, if you remove this and make it blank like this, without any arguments, the system will also complain because we've already told the system that this new function will contain argument lists. So if there's no argument list, definitely the system will also complain. Let's run that also. So you see, compile and run. You can see that the system is still not happy with it. Too few arguments and all of that. All right. But if I put arguments there, the argument list there, um, let's say I have an argument. I use OB initially. I can change the name if I want. Um, let me change the name to Tolu. And I run this. You see that the system is okay with it now. All right. I am Tolu. So that's how to go about that. And another interesting thing is that it's actually possible for you to call more than once and um, this same CR statement will still apply to your call. Take for example, I can decide to copy this and um, do another call, call the function the second time, but with a different argument. Let's say I am Tolu uh, uh, Lu. Now, if I run this, the system will still use this same statement to run the two. The system will pick this first one. I am name. Of course, the, what you have inside name is Tolu. We print that. Then because of the second call, we also go in, I am name, Wulu. So let's do that so that you can see what that is all about. You can see that. So you can do as many calls as you want. And um, of course, the beauty of this is that the system will still pick um, whatever argument you're passing inside to run your code. So I am told you I am Wulu. Now I'll be talking more about function as we go on in this training video. Uh, specifically, when we get to lesson seven, we'll be talking about um, how to return an argument of a particular data type. Thank you for listening.